when Surya Gupta asked me to give this talk, or rather, I asked if I could give this talk, and then she was like, okay, fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I felt like it was an, I was on a retreat. So as, as you know, Buddhists do, we go on retreats. Um, I was on a retreat last month, and um, it's starting to get, you know, to the end of the year, and um, I did a lot of reflecting on this retreat, and I thought that I started reflecting on why I'm on this path or why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I felt like somehow it was important, um, you know, this question of why I'm a Buddhist, um, it kind of started percolating on the retreat. So I felt like it was an opportunity for reflection and self-inquiry. And um, I've got a list of questions. Um, actually, they, they are here in my script. Um, and it's the questions are, um, how do I want to be in the world? And what are my deepest values? And how do I embody these values? Um, what kind of impact do I want to make in the world? And where can my potential be realized? So um, yeah, quite deep. Yeah, <laughs> don't be disturbed. It's not going to all be deep. But um, yeah, I was journaling as one does on retreat and reflecting. And yeah, I thought it would be quite good to kind of put this in, in, a, you know, in a way that I can share, share, share all these that um, came up. All right, so um, let's leave it there, and uh, I'll, I'll get on to my story. So um, after my mom died in, in 2017, um, that was about five, six years? Wait, how long? Am I? Yeah, I don't know, like a few years ago. Um, yeah, I, I started, um, as one does, uh, with grief, um, you know, trying to get in contact with, with meaning and trying to... Um, yeah, just um, getting, trying to find out the answers to why we exist and why we exist as we do and, you know, why is there life and why is there death? Um, so, you know, as one does, I, I went to India, I did a yoga teacher training, um, you know, the works, right? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, just kind of, you know, being like a bit of a spiritual seeker, um, testing out different religions, you know, doing like... Um, yeah, one thing I didn't do was psychedelic, so yeah, maybe I should, the next, <laughs> after Buddhism. <laughs> um, yeah, just kind of like seeking something uh, deeper, you know, uh, I wanted to know why, I just want answers. So um, on this uh, teacher training, uh, I got to spend time in a Tibetan monastery in Nepal as part of the training. And um, there was this, you know, daily schedule of meditation. Um, we did ritual. We did um, seva, which is some kind of service, uh, making bread and, and things. And um, part of it was actually uh, a, um, talks by the monks who lived there. So this is uh, kind of outside Kathmandu a little. Um, and that talk, there was one evening, a lady in our group, um, she was asking the monks, um, so... The monk gave a talk on, on compassion, you know, wisdom and compassion basically sums up Buddhism. But um, yeah, and the lady uh, shared um, about her daughter. So um, someone in her daughter's class was being mean to her daughter, was like maybe bullying her daughter a bit. Um, and then this had been going on for a while and she felt a strong reaction. She wanted to be protective of her daughter as one does, um, which is fair. And um, yeah, she, we had this translator who was, who was conveying the question of the lady to, to the monk. And then the monk's response was, um, it basically just threw the whole thing off because the monk's response was, oh, don't forget that this um, other person who was bullying a daughter, so someone in the class was bullying her daughter, um, is also your daughter. So I found that like kind of puzzling, you know, I, I was like, wait, and, and, and the lady was like, wait, is my question like miscommunicated or the translator <laughs> should be fired or something, you know, like, uh, yeah, but somehow in my heart, I felt like a deep understanding, a deep, it was so illogical, like, how can that other person be your daughter? Because we only have one mom and like, you know, you know, separation, we are we exist as this, this body, this human, we have family and you know, family is separate from friends, friends are separate from community and we are all separate from the rest of the world. So there's a lot of separation. But at that moment, I was, I was thinking like, that is true, like that is so true. Like it's something that just went um, really deep in, deep in. So this was like a heart response. 
And at that moment, I kind of realized, all right, I'm going to try this kind of thing called Buddhism, see where it leads. So this was about like six, seven years ago. Um, so I started reading up and the thing about like, um, I found it really moving about um, the Tibetan kind of monks, um, basically, is um, one of the things, um, I've done, I, I mean, most of us maybe have heard, some of us may have heard, um, their story is um, being exiled from, from their land, and then a lot of them end up living in Nepal and India. And um, one of their biggest fear is not about losing their home, their scriptures, their lives, but it's losing the compassion for their oppressors. And I, I was like, oh yeah, if that is what Buddhism is, I want to be that. So that's why I'm Buddhist. Okay, it doesn't end there, so don't clap yet. <laughs> um, so um, uh, Bhante Sagarachita, who is our um, founder of the movement, um, he also gave this talk about why he's Buddhist. And he his response invoked this universi universality of Buddhism. So it, Buddhism is a universal religion. So he, um, he basically says, um, I believe humanity is one. I believe that it's possible for any human being to communicate with any other human being, to feel for any other human being, and to be friends with any other human being. So, I mean, just this quote alone um, really kind of sunk quite deeply in me. I, I was involved a couple of years ago in um, activism and just wondering like why we have um, really kind of um, systems that are unsustainable and seems to be in a kind of loop that destroys um, ourselves in a way. And um, like the groups that um, Dayanatha mentioned in his talk, like when we have a group, uh, in particular in activism, it tends to be quite polarizing, <coughs> quite divisive. Um, and I, I think that was part of me that looked for or wanted to know how I could progress and how I could be more inclusive um, in order to um, have the sense of collective liberation, you know, something about, um, and in Buddhism, it's, it's something like the bodhisattva ideal. So um, one of the things um, that I found like being involved in activism is that sometimes we get caught in a kind of echo chamber. So it's as though like we're really, really afraid to kind of speak out. Um, and part of why I'm Buddhist is because a lot of it is being a true individual, as we've heard. A lot of it is about kind of, um, learning how to disagree better and also how to be in a creative influence in the world um, and not just um, a closed ecosystem. So I guess in a way, like what I'm trying to say is I'm Buddhist because it's very inclusive. Um, none of us are kind of condemned to, um, you know, a certain state or having uh, excluded from paradise, for example. Um, there is a story in, um, one of my favorite stories is, uh, in, in the Buddhist text, features a serial killer. So you know it's going to be good because uh, <laughs> it's, it's, um, if, if a religion can include a serial killer um, who meets the Buddha and becomes part of the Sangha, I think that is real inclusion. Um, and, you know, <laughs> not that I'm admitting to anything here. <laughs> so in front of a live audience. Um, and the fact is, um, it's so accessible. Anyone can practice. All we need is kind of a body and a mind and um, probably some very good teachers as well and friends. So um, another part is also that Buddhism is never boring. That there's just so much um, to question. To, um, some of the characters in the stories are just so crude and <laughs> cutting and you know borderline like blasphemous. But um, sometimes it's so evocative, so poetic, and so romantic. Even like the moon reflected on water, for example. Um, so all these images. Uh, it ensures that the system that I'm practicing within is never boring, which is I think one of my biggest fears. And yeah. So um, basically, uh, one of the um, most, the thing that can, so that's kind of my way in, but what keeps me going is actually the friendships. So um, like, I'm friends of Sri Gupta and she asked me to be on a team for this retreat. And I was really, really pleased um, to be able to do that because um, then it keeps the connection flowing. I've got to know my group, which is really lovely and kind of all of you. And basically this is um, the thing that kind of sustains um, me is, con is this connection. Um, one of the first um, Buddhist nuns, there's a poem um, by her, and the quote is um, 
from that poem, uh, I'm, I'm just going to read it out, is when the whole world is your friend, fear has no place to call home. So um, kind of that, that's what, what it means is that if you make everyone a friend in, in life, if you connect or really reach out to, to everybody, as Buddhism kind of teaches that we do, um, yeah, we can draw inspiration from each other. And it's very, very challenging. Obviously, you've been sitting, we've all been sitting in this shrine room for like years. <laughs> but um, yet, if somehow a part of it is quite enjoyable, it feels quite aligned. Um, and it's enjoyable because of our connection and the, the fact that we do share a commonality, the commonality of humanity, and Buddhism as a language through which we can express this commonality. So basically in conclusion, um, as I was saying in the beginning, um, I found it helpful to, to reflect, to really reflect on like why um, we're here, um, even if we're not Buddhist, why we're practicing. Um, and I'd like to leave you with um, the questions that I have been reflecting on to take, take with you. Um, so the questions are, how do I want to be in the world? And what are my deepest values and how do I embody these values? Um, what kind of impact do I want to make? And where can my potential be realized? And for me, um, all these questions are answered uh, because I'm a Buddhist. Thank you.